Good afternoon. Welcome to Pollution Prevention Information, what's out there and where to find it. My name is Laura Barnes and I'll be your speaker today. Um, Beth Luber is also online. She's going to be monitoring the questions queue, so if you have questions during the, uh, during the webcast, um, go ahead and put those in and um, we have several places um, during, the, during the broadcast where you'll be able to ask where, where we'll answer those. Um, today I'm going to be discussing tools and tips for finding P2 information effectively and conquering information overload, which I know is kind of a problem for everybody these days. Um, first I'll give you a little bit of background about myself. Um, I've been the Illinois Sustainable Technology Center librarian since 1995. Um, I have a BA in History and an MS in Library and Information Science from the U of I, um, University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign. Um, as a librarian, I respond to information inquiries from both ISTC staff and the public, um, teach workshops to help businesses and organizations improve their environmental performance, and speak to local K-12 to students about ways to go green. Um, I've also done talks for organizations about this very topic, tools and resources for stemming the tide of sustainability information, and effectively using social media. Um, I also author the Environmental News Bits blog. Um, I'm a, and I have a dual appointment. I'm also the Executive Director of the Great Lakes Regional Pollution Prevention Roundtable. Um, in that capacity, I develop content for the Glipper website and consult. I work with um, other P2RX centers um, nationally on information sharing issues and then work with the Glipper Steering Committee to develop training and, and facilitate information sharing among the P2 tabs in uh, the Great Lakes region. Um, just a little housekeeping, the presentation slides are available online. The link is on this slide. Um, it'll also be going out in the follow-up email that I'll be sending out tomorrow. Links to all of these resources are also that I'm covering today are also available in the Pollution Prevention Technical Assistance LibGuide that I developed as a companion piece to this presentation. Um, and I'll be covering that in a little more detail later on in the presentation. Um, as I said, I'll be sending out links to both of those later this, or tomorrow, along with a link to a follow-up evaluation, we would really appreciate your feedback um, to make these webinars as useful as possible for everybody. Um, and I'll pause after each section of the presentation to answer any questions that you have. And as I said, Beth Luber will be mon um, moderating that for me. So let's get started. Um, this probably is a familiar occurrence to, to most of you. I know it is for me. Um, I remember a time when it used to be really hard to find environmental information. Um, then we got the internet. Um, so those days are long gone. Um, today it seems like we're drowning in it. Although it's tempting to just give up, there are tools that can help you manage the flow of information before it completely overwhelms you. And that's one of the things I really want to talk about today. So there are a couple of ways we look for information. Um, the first is search, and we do that when you're doing research or trying to answer a question. And I'm sure for um, most of you, that's the kind of that's the kind of thing you that you do most often. So where do you go when you're doing research or trying to answer a question? Um, you go to Google, you go to Bing, you go to Yahoo, whatever your favorite search engine is. Maybe you go to an article database, particularly if you work at a university that that has um, resources like that. Maybe you go to the engineer down the hall. Um, I know I know a lot of engineers who do that, and that's okay too. Um, you know, asking your colleagues is certainly a good way to to find stuff out. Um, another way other way that we look for information, I do this a lot, is you scan for information when you're trying to keep up with a topic. So generally, you go to trusted news sources or trusted information sources um, for those kinds of things. Um, and as I said today, I'm going to be covering. Um, tools to help you do both of these things more effectively. So first we'll talk about search. Um, and a lot of people now, and I'm one of them, use search and Google interchangeably, and I'm okay with that. So today um, I'm going to be covering um, Google, but uh, Bing is the other big search engine out there right now. Um, in fact, if you're using Yahoo, you're getting search results from Bing. So um, and Bing also has advanced search and some of these other features that I'm talking about on Google. But I'm going to focus on Google because I think that's what most people are using. So just as a basic, some basic guidelines for, for when you're going to search, um, use your time wisely, first of all. 
um, do a preliminary search. There are some browser add-ons that can help you sort through the results. Um, one I'm going to talk about real quickly is Deeper Web. Um, if you haven't found it really quickly, ask an information professional because that's what we're here for. Um, Glipper has a help desk librarian service. If you use that service um, off of our website, if there's just a form you fill out, um, the question actually comes to me and I will do an hour of research for you on whatever topic you're looking for, um, for information on. And, uh, you know, and I, I have, um, I have the internet at my disposal. I have um, databases at the university that I can that I can tap into, um, and then I also have a network of pollution prevention people that I can ask. Um, if you're outside of Glipper service area, because I know that we have a lot of people outside the Great Lakes region today, which I'm very happy about, um, you can also use the P2RX Rapid Response Service. Um, and if you submit a question through the P2 through P2RX. Um, your question will automatically go to whatever P2RX center um, serves your, your region of the country. Um, and then most of the time what happens is that those P2RX rapid response questions are um, passed along to the other center directors so that um, we can use our collective knowledge to, to help answer the question or solve the problem. So this is Deeper Web. Um, Deeper Web is an add-on for, for your browser. Um, I use Firefox, so it's a Firefox add-on, um, but it also works in Internet Explorer. And once you install it, um, it it refers you or it it prefers that you get deep you get you get deeper web search results as a um, as a sidebar in your browser window when you search. Um, it uses Google's database, but what it does is it um, it categorizes your results so you get um, results under a new, news results show up under a news heading. Resources result, results, just basic web pages and documents show up under the resources search. Um, metric searches for statistics. Um, I find this really helpful when I'm um, doing research particular, and I'm looking for a particular type of information because sometimes um, limiting your search in the Google search box doesn't, you still end up with, with way too many results. Um, so I, I find it helpful. Um, the slide here shows um, the sample search that I did um, on pollution prevention and what those results look like. Um, Deeper Web also has a cloud um, function that returns um, it returns the results as a tag cloud. So and you can click on the words to. Um, prefer only those words or to eliminate words that you don't want. Um, and that's particularly helpful if you're searching for something that has multiple meanings. Um, printers is the example that I always use because you have the printing industry and then you have the printers that you hook up to your computer to print documents. And most of the time when you're searching for things about the printing industry, you don't want things having to do with the printer sitting on your desktop. Um, so, so those similar words, tag clouds are really good at kind of helping you, helping you narrow down that search. The next thing you need to do is trust but verify. So choose your sources carefully. And this is just a basic information literacy um, thing. One thing to keep in mind is that library sources are evaluated before they're purchased, um, which means that generally, they tend to be more trustworthy, um, at least I think so. Um, I also tend to prefer government websites, um, although I have gotten into arguments with people about that when I've, when I've said that, which I think is kind of interesting. Um, and then don't assume that the web has the most recent or obviously the most accurate information. Um, there's that old New Yorker cartoon floating around from when the internet first got popular back in the late 90s. Um, on the internet, nobody knows you're a dog. Well, that's, I mean, that's the case. You want to make sure that your information is coming from a re reputable source. So trust but verify. Always check to see how current a page is. Always look for information about the author of the page. Um, you know, if, if it's from an organization or a consortium, um, you know, sometimes they have a really slick website and it's, you know, but the information is kind of one-sided. So just it's it's a good idea always to 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 know to know where your information comes from. So 
when do you use what? Use a search engine when you're looking for something specific, an unusual term or an exact phrase. Um, so Google would be obviously an example of a search engine. Um, and to help you refine your search, it's often a good idea to use some of the advanced search features, which I'm going to talk about in a few minutes. Um, and then read the search engine help pages for new techniques. Um, and I know that probably librarians are really the only people who go and look at those very often. But uh, like I said, I personally find them really helpful. Google can do, Google can do a lot of really neat stuff. And um, when I was actually getting ready to do this talk, um, I went and I hadn't looked at the web search pages in a while, and I'm like, oh, wow, that's really neat. I didn't know you could do that. Um, so it, and, and the help pages are written in a really straightforward way, so it's pretty easy to understand what's going on. Um, so use a search engine when you're looking for something specific. If you're looking for lots of information on a particular topic, you want to use a directory. Um, some examples of directories include um, Glipper Sector Resources. Um, the Pollution Prevention Resource Exchange Topic Hubs, and um, P2 Info House, which used to be um, run by a group in North Carolina and is now run by, the, um, by P2 Rick in Nebraska. And uh, that's, P2 Info House is a wealth of information, particularly on um, having to do with, they, they archive older PDFs of older documents. So, if you're looking, uh, there's still a lot of really good pollution prevention information out there from pre, the pre-internet era, um, and you're most likely to find that on P2 Info House. So some useful Google search tricks, at least things that I use a lot. Um, the first one is site search. Um, if you use site colon at the end of, of, your, um, of your search your search string, you can restrict your search to a specific website. So an example of that would be pollution prevention in quotes. When you put a phrase in quotes, that searches for the phrase, not just the words added together. Um, and if you do site colon epa.gov, then you're only searching for pollution prevention for that phrase on EPA's website. Um, like I said, I find this really helpful, um, particularly for websites that maybe don't have as robust a search engine themselves. Um, a lot of sites now are using Google search, the Google site search, um, so it's less of a problem than it used to be, but again, I still find it really helpful. Um, you can ex Google, you can exclude a word by adding a dash before the word to exclude all results that include that word. Um, for example, solvent use printers minus computers takes out, hopefully, the, com the printers that you attach to your computer as opposed to the printers the printing industry printers. Um, another thing I like to do because I usually have Google open or I have a browser window open with the Google search up in the top right is I like to use Google as my dictionary. Um, there are a couple of reasons for this. Um, the one, the couple of reasons I like to do that. Um, the first is because it's easier. I don't have to go to a dictionary site or pull a dictionary off my desk. Um, the second is that it Google doesn't just search the dictionary definition for a term. It will also go out and crawl websites and look for that term to see how it's used in a sentence. Um, so you can get, if, especially if it's a term that's pretty specialized and might not be in your standard dictionary, um, this is a really helpful tool. So um, the operator is define colon. So for example, if you wanted to search for bio, a definition for biomimicry, you could do define colon biomimicry and get a whole list of definitions. Um, Google, like I said, does have um, really good help. Um, they have a list of search tips and tricks and then um, a whole list of search operators also. I mean, these are just the ones, like I said, that, that I use the most often. Um, I'm sure other people have their favorites too. And if you have your favorites, please feel free to email them to me and I will be happy to uh, add them on to the LibGuide that, that I've developed because that's, that's a work in progress. So once you've searched Google for your top, use it, you know, for your top, for what you're looking for, generally you have pages and pages and pages of search results. So how do you refine those results to find the stuff that's most interesting? Um, well, you can filter your results by the type of content. So some options include web, images, maps, videos, news, books, places, blogs, discussions, applications, and patents. 
Um, my daughter has gotten really, really good at uh, Google image searches. Um, in sixth grade, she was less good at citing them properly, but that's a whole other issue. Um, Google is not a source. Google is not a source in and of itself. Let's just we'll leave it at that. Um, some other filtering options include um, the publish date of the website, so you can prefer newer things first. Um, Personalization. Google sometimes personalizes your search results based on your past search activity. You can tweak or turn off personalization if you aren't getting the results that you want. Um, there's also verbatim search. And what verbatim does is um, you search as using the exact keywords you typed. Now you would think that's what Google does. Well, <laughs> You would be wrong. Um, the searches you make on Google are usually improved to help minimize the time spent, your time spent searching and to get you the information that you really want. So basically, Google is trying to think for you, which is, in general, pretty helpful. Um, when you want to search for very specific words, you can use the verbatim tool so that Google search is using those ex or is so that Google is using the exact words that you entered. Um, instructions for using these options are on the Where to Start page of the P2 Technical Assistance LibGuide, which, as I said, I will talk about um, later. And again, more help with search. Um, Google does have a really good um, good um, page for, for refining search results. Um, the link is, is, is there on the slide. Um, and then the University of Illinois Library has also developed a LibGuide for Google that has some pretty good tips and tricks. Um, and I was very happy to find that and be able to share it with you guys because uh, I hate recreating content that's already out there. <laughs> Another thing to keep in mind is remember traditional resources. Um, the journal literature is a really good source of re highly reliable information. Um, you can access that through your local public university or community colleges library libraries databases. Um, Libraries subscribe to things like Scopus and Web of Science and 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 other and other citation citation databases. Um, they're paying for that so that you can go in and use it. Um, Google Scholar is also a really good free resource. Um, once you identify citations in Google Scholar or in the the library databases, um, you may have to negotiate to get hard to get full text hard copies, um, but you should be able to do that again through your local libraries and our library loan service. Um, so your librarian is your friend. Please keep that in mind. That's, you know, we're, we're there for a reason. Um, if you're looking for books and reports, again, your local public university or community college library's online catalog is a great resource for, for identifying um, relevant books and government reports. Um, another option is worldcat.org, which um, is a it's a, a worldwide database of library holdings. Um, and that helps you not only identify um, documents, but also helps you identify where you can get those documents um, or where your local library can get them for you. Um, and there are a lot of, uh, most of those, a lot of those records, if the, if the report is online, will have a link to the resource in the record. So, you can just go and grab the PDF and then you're done. Um, another thing to keep in mind it, when you're searching generally is use synonyms. Not everybody calls the same, you know, call, calls things the same thing. So off the top of my head, this, this slide shows um, seven different ways that, that I found to describe P2. Um, you have pollution prevention. You have waste reduction, source reduction, cleaner production, waste minimization, clean manufacturing, zero waste. You also might find things, useful items if you search lean manufacturing. Um, case studies are often called success stories, best practices or project summaries. So no matter where you're searching, remember to vary your, your search terms, especially if you're having trouble finding what you're looking for. Or if you're like me, because I'm kind of obsessive about it, I want to find everything there is to find on a particular topic, um, which as a, makes me a really good librarian, but also I have to be really careful not to overload people when they ask me to find information for them. So it, it's a double-edged sword. Finally, if you can't find it or don't know where to start, ask. 
ask your local librarian, especially if you have one on site. I know some of you are, are um, affiliated with you know, companies or with, with government agencies that, that might have a librarian on staff. Um, use us. That's why we're there. Um, again, Glipper Help Desk Librarian, you can always submit a question there. Um, you can submit a question to the P2RX Rapid Response Service. Um, also, you can ask your, um, your colleagues on your regional roundtables email list. Um, that's sort of the virtual version of the engineer down the hall. Um, and I think that's, that for a lot of the problems that you guys are dealing with, or a lot of the, the questions that you guys have, um, I think tapping your colleagues' expertise is really key. So I will stop here and we'll take questions. Beth, what do we have? Our one question is, how do you check when a web page was last updated? Hopefully, they will have a date on the bottom that says last updated. I know US EPA's website has that. Um, sometimes the information is there, sometimes it's not. Um, I find it frustrating when, when websites don't put that information on there. Um, if I can find a better answer to that question, um, I, will, I will let you know, because there may be a way to check like in the pages source or something like that. But, uh, but really what I do is I look for last updated or you know, some kind of date on the, on the web page itself. OK, was that, that was the only yes, one so far? I only had one oh. question. OK. All right, then we will move on. So trying to keep up with current environmental news and new resources is a never-ending task. Um, my email inbox shows that more often than not, I'm, I myself am unsuccessful at truly keeping up. Of course, it's also, I, it's also my job to keep up so that other people don't have to keep up, don't have to follow the, the, all of the, the resources that, or all of the, the news sources that I do. Um, fortunately, there are some tools that make, to make scanning for updates a lot easier. Um, and most of these I, I use myself with varying degrees of success because I am an information junkie. Um, first thing, if the first tool you can use is, is um, RSS. RSS stands for Really Simple Syndication. And what, that mean, what it means is that RSS and a feed re reader will bring the content of your favorite environmental news site to your desktop. So you don't have to go out and visit multiple websites to get it every day. Um, you can just go into your feed reader, and there it is. It's really pretty awesome. My favorite feed reader is Google Reader. Um, you'll notice I use a lot of Google resources. Google puts out good product, and it's, it's no cost. So it's, it's a win for everybody. Um, there are other feed readers out there, including a lot of desktop readers. I like Google Reader because its interface is clean, it's easy to use, and it's browser-based, so I can read it anywhere. Um, and I have, I do have a smartphone, so I can, you know, I can read, read my stuff, read my stuff in Google Reader while I'm waiting for my daughter to finish a flute lesson or something like that. Um, as you can see, it's, uh, it, it, as I said, it's clean, it's, it's clean, it's straightforward, um, and and I really like it. Um, so. To subscribe to a feed, there's a, a red subscribe box up in the, in the top left cor corner. Um, you just click that box and a drop, a, a window appears and you just put the, uh, the URL for the RSS feed that you have in your feed reader. Um, you can organize your subscriptions into folders. Um, click on a folder to read all of the items in that folder. Um, and click on a feed name to read the items only in that feed. And as you can see, I have lots of folders. I have lots of feeds. Um, as I said, I'm an information junkie. There's really, I'm, there's no help for me. <laughs> and there's, that, that's the reason I'm a librarian. Um, so it's, it, as I said, it's pretty straightforward. Um, so once you click on an item, or once you click into a feed, um, you can look at individual items. You can star those items if you want to, um, to keep them in your reader after you've read them. Um, you can send. You can use the send to feature to an, to um, share the story on social media, um, including Twitter and Facebook. Um, I also like to share information I find. That's another thing that makes me a good librarian. Um, but uh, but if you want to if you want to email it to your, email a link to your colleagues, um, or share as I said on social media channels, it's really easy to do that. 
Um, another tool that I use is um, Google Alerts, and you can um, re you can they're really easy to set up. Um, you just go to alerts.google.com and you get this screen. Um, you can you do you just put in a search query. You choose um, what type of results you want. Everything gives you everything. You can also limit by news and by web pages only. Um, how often do you want it? Do you want it, you know, as it updates, which I think is a really bad idea. Um, do you want it once a day? Do you want it once a week? Um, and then how many results do you want? Um, you can limit um, to, you can, you can say you want all results, which is what I tend to do, or you can limit it to, quote, best results. And that's, um, and then Google determines what the best results are. So once you do the search, it will show on the right-hand side um, a preview pane so you can see what the email is going to look like. Um, and then you can tweak your search depending on what you're, you know, on, on what you're looking for. Um, these are available as RSS feeds as well as email newsletters. So if you don't want to clutter up your inbox, you can, you can drop it into your feed reader. Um, I actually get them emailed to me once a week because I, I, it's easier for me. I'm always in my email. Um, they're excellent, though, for helping you keep up with topics of interest or to find out what people are saying about your organization. I actually have an alert set up for the Illinois Sustainable Technology Center um, so that I can get information if a news story appears about us or about one of our events um, so I can keep track of what's going on and pass that along to our communications people. If you're like me and you live in your email, and I really do live in my email, um, you can get RSS feeds sent to your inbox. Um, there's a service called Blog Trotter, which is free. Um, and all you do to, to, to convert an RSS feed to an email message is paste in the URL of the feed, your email address, and then choose how often you want to get, to get the updates. You can, again, do real time, or you can do it in a variety of digests. Um, it's a really great service. As I said, it's free, um, and it's it's really helpful to me because I'm much more likely to go into my email than I am to my feed reader, and you know, and that varies by person. So, are there questions on the the current awareness part of the presentation? We had one question for the beginning part that was entered just after you started. Okay. Uh, the question is, can we place a double filter on inquiries when using a search engine? And the example is, how would I search for a topic such as solvents on a specific website like the epa.gov while also excluding a keyword like printers? Oh, okay. You would do, you would construct your search, so solvents, and then do, you know, do printers, or printer minus computer if you wanted to do it that way, and then just put site colon at the end of your, at the end of the search string. So do your whole search, um, you know, do, do your whole, your, your whole search construction, and then just tack on site colon at the end, and the site name at the end, the site URL at the end, and it, and it'll search. So you just append it onto the end of your search. That makes sense. So for questions for this section, how do you use the feed in Bing? The uh, I'm sorry. How do you use the feed to bring the news of top topics you desire? How do you 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 mean the RSS? I assume they mean the RSS. How do you identify feeds? From the to put into your RSS reader, I'm assuming I, I'm assuming that's the question. Is that could whoever asked it clarify to make sure that I'm going to answer the question that I think you're asking? <laughs> um, the way the the first icon or the the first slide that I showed um, had an orange icon um, with wavy lines, and that's the universal icon for RSS feeds. So generally, if you're on a website and you click that icon, um, it will take you to either a list of, of feeds from that website or, um, or to the feed itself, um, if they only have one RSS feed for the entire website. 
and uh, and then you just take the URL from that feed and uh, or from that the, the page that the feed is on and plug that into your into your Google reader a lot of websites also once you get onto the page with the list of their RSS feeds will have um, buttons that will let you subscribe using various different feed readers and Google reader is almost always on there um, so I hope that answered the question if it didn't yes okay mm -hmm. good good okay I was gonna say if it didn't send me a follow-up <laughs> so okay uh, okay, do we the have next any question? Okay. Is can you share your RSS feed to a subscription list? Um, there are ways to do that. You mean? I assume that means if you have an RSS feed, can you take that feed and and use it someplace else, like in an email or something like that? Um, and the answer to that is yes. It depends on on the program um, you're using or the um, you know, if, if you're if you like wanted to put a feed on a website, um, there are services that will actually free services that will actually let you turn um, RSS feeds into HTML pages, um, which is using JavaScript, which is really awesome. Um, I use a service called Feed to J or um, Feed to JavaScript, which uh, will generate code that you can then put into an uh, into a web page, and it will auto update. Um, auto update the feed and if you have questions specific questions like that about how to do things like that um, email me because it's hard to explain it in words but I can direct you to some resources okay do we have uh, any yeah the viewer who asked that previous question asked if you could share your list with with the viewers oh oh share my RSS feed list mm -hmm. um, I will have to get back to you on that. I have I have a lot of subscriptions that I look at, um, but I would be happy um, later today to send out a, um, to anybody who's interested a list of the things that I th the the feeds that I think you might find you guys might find the most interesting. Um, and I'll talk about a few of those um, a little bit later. I'm I, the next section actually deals specifically with uh, with with specific resources. Um, so I'll I'll um, I'll provide I'll provide you with some of those coming up here in the next section too. Okay, uh, a viewer asked if you could please reshow the Google page you showed before the alert. Okay, let's see that one. Yes. Okay, there wasn't a question attached to that, so I'll read okay, the so, next question, and then they might okay. submit another one. Okay, okay, sounds good. Mm -hmm. uh, the next question is, what are some of the best tools boxes available? The best what? I'm sorry? Uh, Toolboxes available. The best toolboxes. I'm not sure I understand the question. Maybe like for search engine tools? Like you have the Google Deep web or well deep, yeah yeah deeper deeper web is um, like I said is a really good tool for for um, kind of wading through search results um, Google Reader I find really helpful like I said for um, for for keeping up with current awareness type stuff I mean a lot of these things are these are tools that I use every day um, and there these are all the links to all of these are included in the um, the LibGuide that, as I said, I'll talk about in the next section. So, does anyone else have questions? Uh, not at this time. Okay. Okay. Onward. So, um, where are some specific places to find P2 information? Um, this is going to be a very, very brief overview because there are literally, well, a gazillion um, places that you can go for really quality P2 information. Um, but I'm kind of hitting the highlights here. Um, the first is this LibGuide that I've been talking about. Um, one of the things that I did as a companion to this webinar is I developed a, a LibGuide, which is basically a pathfinder um, for pollution prevention technical assistance providers. Um, so um, I've included on there, um, on the front page is P2 events from, um, 
it's actually the Glipper events calendar because I changed the RSS feed. Um, documents recently added to the great, to the Glipper's um, sector resources collection. Um, we have the P2 training tab um, includes links to resources especially helpful to new P2 practitioners um, and it includes um, links to ways to um, network with others in the P2 field, um, including a complete list of the um, email lists run by the regional roundtables um, throughout the country, um, training videos um, that the Western States Pollution Prevention Network um, and NPPR developed, um, and then some links to really core um, literature and, and resources on doing pollution prevention technical assistance. Um, the case studies link links to case sources for case studies and also offers some tips for locating case studies um, generally. Um, software tools and databases includes links to software tools and databases but also calculators um, and things like that. Um, the sector subject specific set of pages includes um, pages on energy efficiency, resources, water conservation, purchasing, green building, green chemistry, and green business, as well as a where to start page that links to websites that include information on a, vari uh, on a variety of sectors. Um, it also has um, all of the search tips that I covered in the first part of the talk today, um, and including links to the Google help pages and things like that. Um, and then the news and current awareness section has links to Google Reader, it has links to Google, Google Alerts, um, and it also has links to some of the news and current awareness resources that I find most helpful. Um, I'm, it's a pretty short list right now because I'm trying not to overwhelm people. If you have a favorite, please email me and I'll put it in there. Um, the statistics and data sets. Um, page links to sources of statistics and data sets, which um, is cover I'm covering in the next section of the webinar. And then um, patents, methods, and standards links to sources for, for those things. Um, the next site I want to talk about is the Great Lakes Regional Pollution Prevention Roundtable. Um, as I mentioned, we have the sector resources section. Um, of the website is basically a virtual library of pollution prevention information. Um, I'm not even sure how many records we have in there now, but it's a lot. We cover about 80 different sectors, um, so it's a really good resource. Um, if you're, you know, if you're looking, if we and we include things like case studies and calculators and, and things like that. Um, we also have environmental news on the site. Um, the the main page includes our most recent the most recent post to our blog. Um, you know, this is this is really a good place to get started, particularly if if you're in the um, in the region. And then under services on the left hand side of the of uh, the left hand column, you can see there's a link to help desk, and that is the help desk librarian service. So if you have a question and you can, you're having trouble finding the answer, click, click that link, submit the form, and um, I'll do my best to help you out. Um, next place to go, um, I think a great place to go is um, US EPA's pollution, pollution prevention page. Um, this is the portal to all things P2 um, when it comes to EPA resources. And as I said, it's a really good place to start. Um, you know, they have, they have information on measurement, they have information on um, green products, green suppliers, you know, publications. Pretty much, pretty much everything that, that you're looking for. If you're looking for something, um, particularly if it's, it's EPA related, this is the place to go. And then there's um, the P2RX website, which uh, includes, um, again, links to news, but it's news from all of the P2RX centers. Um, it also includes, um, if you go under P2 services, that will get you the rapid response service. Um, P2 information, the P2 information menu will get you to um, to the top, to a list of the top, all the topic hubs that the P2RX centers have developed. Um, those are also really good, um, rich resources of pollution prevention information in particular topic or, or areas or sectors. Um, environmental news bits is the blog that I do. 
Um, there is an RSS feed. You can see I circled it up on the top, the, the icon on the top right. So if you want to get, um, if you want to want to drop the uh, the feed into your reader, um, you can you can keep up with that. I don't just do P2. I do a lot of other um, sustainability stuff too. Um, but uh, I try to make it useful, and I am trying not to do more than 10 posts a day because I don't want to overwhelm people. Um, you can also subscribe via email. You can see the link um, on the lower right that's circled. Um, so if you don't want to if you don't want to do it in your do um, do the RSS reader thing, you can do the uh, you can do an email subscription. Are there questions? Yes, uh, this is a comment and a question. Okay. Uh, selecting the right keyword can make all the difference in the desired search re search results. Are there any tips or guidelines for how to select the right keyword when doing a Google search on a uh, topic? Be as creative as possible. <laughs> um, and if something doesn't work, try to think of another synonym. Um, the example that I gave for pollution prevention um, earlier in the webinar, where I, you know, just sitting and thinking about it for less than five minutes, I came up with, with seven different ways that you can say pollution prevention. Um, case studies is the same way. Um, like I said, I've seen them as success stories. I've seen them as project summaries. Um, so, so think about you know, try try to think as creatively as possible about all of the possible ways that you could could uh, could describe a concept, and then just keep trying. Persistence a lot of times is key, um, and sometimes the answer is that there's not an answer. Um, there's just no information on the topic, um, which, as a librarian, like I said, I find very frustrating because there has to be an answer. Darn it! But not there. Are, there isn't always. So, are there any other? No, that was the only no. question. That's okay. There. Okay. All righty. Moving on. I'm, now I'm going to talk a little bit about statistics, data sets, and calculators. Um, a Google search of environmental data yields uh, about four million results, which of course everybody is going to want to go through all of those, right? Probably not. Um, so, where do you start when looking for statistical information? Um, you can ask yourself some questions to narrow it down. Um, who would be interested in the, in the data? What government agencies might collect that information? Um, are there trade or professional associations related to the topic? Um, are companies required to report this information and to whom? Um, and what types of data do I want? Um, first thing to keep in mind is um, there are two types of data, data generally that you can get. You can get data sets which consist of statistics that have been collected but haven't been analyzed. And then you get compiled statistics. Those are data sets that have been turned into usable information through analysis. Um, and a lot of times those will show up as charts, graphs, infographics, things like that. Um, some really good places to go for data. Um, the first one is the Census Bureau. Um, it has a wealth of demographic information. Um, the data sets that I use most often are the Annual Survey of Manufacturers, which compiles U.S. data by industry sector, um, and county business patterns, which compiles data by industry sector at the state and county level. Um, county business patterns is particularly useful when you want to find out how many of a particular business um, there are in your state and how your state compares to others in your region. Um, I have generated this, inf this um, information and lists from information like this. Um, for people who are writing grant proposals, um, because you can show that yes, you know, yes, there's a need in my state, or yes, there's a need within the region, because we have, you know, Y number of metal or metal finishers, or X number of printers. Another place to go, another place that you guys are probably going to be really interested in. Um, is the toxics release inventory, which has a wealth of data on the kinds of um, emissions that, that companies are producing. Um, and uh, EPA has this really nice um, subset of the TRI um, website that related specifically to P2 and TRI. Um, and uh, 
as part of TRI reporting, companies are asked about their source reduction practices. Um, the, this data is, these data are available as part of the TRI data set. Um, the TRI and P2 page has links to training on how to use the information to gather data about P2 practices within the reporting companies. Um, Glipper is going to be hosting a webinar sometime next spring about how the Minnesota Technical Assistance Program is mining TRI data um, to decide on which industrial sectors they should focus their technical assistance efforts. Um, and I think that could be, I, I know I'm personally pretty interested in how they're doing that. Um, Envirofax is um, EPA's gateway to um, environmental data. Um, it integrates information from a variety of, of data sets. Um, each of these databases contains information about facilities that are required to report activity to a state or a federal system. Um, you can retrieve information about hazardous waste, toxics and air releases, Superfund sites, and water discharge permits, among other things. Um, facility information and a map of its location is also provided. Um, and Envirofa Envirofax also allows you to search individual data sets. That's what the topic searches are on, on the front page. Um, and it's, there's a lot of data in there. <laughs> it's, it's pretty impressive. Um, another good place to go, particularly if you're looking for information on energy and the environment, is um, the Energy Information Administration. Um, EIA um, aggregates energy data of all types and is really the best place to go when looking for energy-related data in the U U.S. energy data. Um, EIA's environmental portal mainly focuses on CO2 and other greenhouse gas emissions. Um, their consumption and efficiency portal includes a wealth of data on industrial energy consumption, um, including energy expenditures, purposes for energy use, and trend data. And that data may be particularly useful for those of you who are, um, who are doing, um, writing grants to do, um, to do energy efficiency work. Um, DOE's Advanced Manufacturing Office um, has some really great information on um, energy and carbon footprints. These provide a mapping of energy from supply to end use in manufacturing. Um, they illustrate where energy is used and lost and where greenhouse gases are emitted. Um, footprints are available for the 15 industries listed on, on the page um, and for U.S. manufacturing as a whole. Um, the next two slides show the U.S. manufacturing industry's um, energy and carbon footprint. Um, this, I mean, that's this is the two-page the two-page fact sheet. So, this is their to total energy use, and then um, on-site energy use. And I'm showing these just as an example of of what these footprints look like. Um, I th I think they can be pretty helpful if you're working, particularly if you're working um, with the industries that they cover. Um, the, Nash, the next one I'm going to talk about is the National P2 Results Data System, um, which is, again, on the P2RX website. Um, it collects readily available data on waste reduction and resource efficiency efforts from public agencies across the country. Um, data is collected on activity measures and behavior change, on both, so both of those things you can get data on. Um, results are available by region as well as nationally. Um, 2011 data should be released by NPPR in the next month or so. Um, and I encourage you to enter data from your state to improve the results because this is all self-reported by state, by, by public programs. Um, and, and they rely on you guys to, to, give them, to give them the data. Are there questions for, for this section? There are no questions at this okay. time. Okay. Moving on going to talk next about P2 measurement and calculators. Um, US EPA has just released a new version of their um, P2 greenhouse gas calculator. This was developed to assist the P2 community with reporting EPA's outcome measures, um, including pounds of pollutants reduced, gallons of water saved, and dollars saved through adoption of P2 practices. Um, this calculator is, is used to calculate changes in greenhouse gas emissions from P2 projects. It converts activity values entered, um, like kilowatt hours saved, gallons of water reduced, things like that, um, to CO2 equivalents. It aggregates greenhouse gas reductions from individual products and categories, provides data transparency through references and justification. It also provides calculations for energy conservation, green energy, stationary and mobile sources, 
um, fuel reduction and substitution, um, green chemistry, water conservation, and material, the materials management module, um, which is currently under construction. The P2 cost calculator calculates the financial savings in dollars from implementing specific P2 activities, including things like hazardous inputs and waste, air emissions, water use, water pollution, energy, electricity, and then non-hazardous inputs and solid waste. Um, you can get the calculators from EPA's Measuring P2 website, um, NPPR's P2 measurement tools website. Um, there's also going to be a training webinar um, on January 16th um, where you can learn to use the calculators. And then um, other calculators and software tools are available on the um, P2 LibGuide, um, P2 Technical Assistance LibGuide under the Software Tools and Databases um, tab. Are there questions on this? Not for this section. Okay. Okay, moving on. So now I'm going to talk very briefly about um, pro tools that you can use to help you get organized. Once you've found your information, um, how you can find it again easily. Um, first one of these tools is, is Delicious. Um, Delicious and other social bookmarking websites are nice to use for a couple of reasons. Because they're on the web, you can take your bookmarks anywhere. You can share sites with your friends on the site, on the site via an RSS feed or on Twitter, Facebook, and other social networking websites. Um, you can also work with groups of people to identify resources by using a common tag. Um, P2 Tag Team is a cooperative tagging effort um, that P2RX has been doing for a while. I can't remember exactly how long. Um, you can see all of the bookmarks with that tag um, by going to delicious.com slash tag slash p2 tag team all one word um, and then you can also search delicious to see what other users are tagging um, as I said I really like this social bookmarking um, because you can take your book you, you have access to your bookmarks anywhere if you use your browser's bookmark functionality you're tied to that computer um, and since I have a computer at home, you know, it's, it's nice to be able to know that I can always go on Delicious and, and find what I need. Um, and I also, again, I'm a librarian. I like to share information. I like the sharing component. Um, Pocket, which used to be called Read It Later, is a really nifty little tool that I use all the time because it, it, what it does is it allows you to easily save articles and links that you want to read and then discard. So if you find a, a magazine article online or a news article online and you don't have time to read it right now because it's kind of long, you can um, click the pocket icon. Once you have pocket installed, you can uh, the add-on installed, you can click the pocket icon um, in your browser's um, link bar, your, your navigation bar, and, uh, and, and add it to your list. And then you can read it when you're ready. Um, you can read it and not only can you read it when you're ready, you can read it on your browser. You can and um, read it later, or Pocket rather, also syncs up to their website. So you can also, if you have their mobile, if you have a smartphone and you have their mobile app installed, you can read it on your phone later. You can, um, or you can read it on another web browser because because your list is right there because it's it's synced to to Pocket server. Um, it's very it's 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 a really handy little tool, um, and I use it all the time. Um, another website that I really like is Goodreads. Um, it's an excellent way to keep track of the books you've read and those that you want to read. Um, you can also connect with other readers and get book recommendations. Um, and it's not just for people for fiction readers. I mean, obviously, you can use it for you know for for any books that you're interested in. Um, I also use it to keep track of books I've purchased because I can't keep a track of that any other way. Um, finally, um, I wanted to, to do a little plug for Mendeley. Um, Mendeley is a free reference manager and academic social network that can help you organize your research, collaborate with others online, and discover the latest research. Um, with Mendeley, you can automatically generate bibliographies, which is really nifty if you're, you know, if you're, if you're um, writing a journal article or something like that. Um, read and annotate PDFs from within the program. Um, import and organize PDFs from your computer. 
um, organize, connect with colleagues to share your papers and annotations, and then sync to the Mendeley server so you can access your papers from anywhere. Um, the program is available as a free download, and um, actually my favorite, my favorite feature is that you can import, it's, it's a way to, if you download PDFs to read later, or you have PDFs of articles that you're hanging on to, it's a really good way to keep track of, of where those are on your computer and find them easily again. Um, and, that, and mainly that's what I use it for. So hopefully um, I have uh, given you the tools to be able to quickly and efficiently find P2 information um, and organize it so that you can find it again later. Um, are there any final questions? None have been submitted yet. Okay, well, um, that's all I have today. Um, again, the presentation slides are available online. The link is, is down below there. Um, links to all of these resources are also available in the P2 Technical Assistance LibGuide. Um, I'll be sending out links to um, the slides, the, uh, the LibGuide, um, a follow-up evaluation, and uh, and to the the archive um, of the of the the webinar, if you want to refer to it again, um, tomorrow tomorrow sometime. So uh, thank you very much for attending the webinar today, and uh, we'll keep you posted on on future Flipper webinars. Thanks, everybody. <laughs>